Well, I think in education right now, we're using information in new ways to transform the conversation in schools and districts. And we're trying to converse in ways that people process information in their daily life. And that's through the uh, internet, their computer, their handhelds, and the stream of video. I mean, it's just using that information in a way that's comfortable to people. Whether it's a principal, a teacher, a parent, a legislator, a governor, maybe in Washington, somebody saying, what's Colorado doing? It's when that individual decides to access our story. Having things all tied together and being a full circle is how I try to approach everything that we do in the classroom. With no matter if it's a podcast or a video clip online, or if it's just simply uh, scrolling down a web page or signing up for an electronic magazine subscription, really in some ways nothing has changed from the first printing press right on through ham radio and the first black and white TV broadcast, you're, you're putting out signals and information. And frankly, we didn't grow up with the technology, so for many in the organization, it's a stretch. So you have to, before you can provide that leadership, it's try to imagine ourselves, how can it be? This is one of several tutorials to help you navigate the Colorado growth model. The press from the field, the users, is to have information that they can immediately use. What we're doing with growth data is to show how individual districts, schools, and in fact students perform over time on assessment. And it's very interactive and uh, you can drill down and find the school you'd like or the student you'd like. That's one example. I think that there are new things that are happening in the field that if we can bring those uh, approaches in, can be useful for others. So I think that it's identify useful practices and then generalize them. Today we want to talk about vapor pressure. There's a fellow named Jonathan Bergman, a teacher in Woodland Park, and he's gaining a lot of national attention because of the use of uh, vodcast. He's been videotaping his class sessions. A couple years ago, somebody said, oh, you should put them on the web, which he did. And then uh, last year, his student said, you know, I'd sure like to view the lesson before I get to class. Here's an interesting experiment. If you had a beaker filled with water. And all of a sudden, now their homework was view the lesson. And things they used to do at home now became classwork. And it's completely turned around the process of teaching and learning in a very helpful way. And the students love being able to hit pause on the, on the teacher and replay a point. So I think that what we're learning in the department is often outreach where we identify useful practices, learn how the power of them. And whether it's a wiki, whether it's a podcast, it's, it really is changing the way kids uh, learn and teachers teach. Text poll. Coming on the next podcast, cell phone text poll, do you like pie or coffee or cake or milk or, or some combination there. Yeah, we could write the test. Yeah. We'll see you, bye. I think that there's also a concern we all have about making information secure and so that uh, there are rights that parents have with respect to the privacy of their own students' information. And we need to make sure that uh, that's made secure. Um, the trick is to make it not so buttoned down and tight that it's not very usable. And it's an ongoing challenge to balance these two things. The video streaming, the podcasting, blogging, you know, there's, there's a lot of, of value in the technology. There's also a big concern uh, from a security side that you, know, you don't want to lose sensitive information. You don't want systems to be hacked. It's nothing new. From the day the internet started, there were people trying to hack in. And there's a happy medium in there that you know, these, these communication tools can be provided in a secure environment you know, with the, the right setup. It's, it's, not, it's not something so new that there aren't, there aren't solutions for, that um, you can, you know, you don't have to use security as a stop point that you can't do it. You know, it's, it there, there are solutions. We're all focused as a state and as a country on results. Absolutely the most important thing. We're recognizing to get that, you need a statewide system of accountability and support. Accountability is important, support is too. But those two things won't get you there. What you also have to have are some interme intermediary steps. There are things like operational excellence, and there's also um, innovation. And we're firmly convinced that innovation will take us to a better place with results. At the bottom, though, it all what drives this whole thing is high quality data and the abil ability to learn better. And it's there that I think technology can really lead the way. And it's absolutely essential. If you want this, there's a chain of things that have to take place, and technology plays a key role. I think the main idea 
really is whether we view this as a necessity or a luxury. And if it is a necessity, and this is something we invest in because we know the return will exceed the cost of investment, then it makes sense to do it. It's vital.